On today's episode of the show, we're talking some quarterback steals, some quarterback sleepers, some players that might end up late round league winners at the quarterback position. We're covering all the preseason news, injury updates, and a whole lot more. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us some comments, and enjoy the show. For the second time in my life, I'm guilty of committing a crime, being horrifically ill-prepared for my fantasy football draft. Cause I doubt my league mates minded my team finishing 3-10, and ten, earning the ridicule of not just my friends and family, but of every man, woman, and child I've ever encountered. But this season, I find I'm so excited I can barely sit still or hold a thought in my head. I think it's the excitement only a future hashtag foot clan champion can feel. A future champ at the start of a long journey, whose conclusion is dispersing a wide range of insults upon my wingmates. Things like, you're one pathetic loser, or you must be a major disappointment to your parents, or my personal favorite, you suck, buttface. You know who's going to be the toilet bowl champion this year? Not me. Not me. To join me on this journey, head to www.ultimatedraftkit.com. I hope to see you there. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Yeah. I don't have all the vowels yet, Mike. Ah, I see. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't wait for E. E Gads. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Tuesday, August 16th. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. How you doing, Jay? I'm doing great, man. This week is an exciting, exciting week. This is like, I feel that fantasy football is really coming in full force. You've got preseason games sandwiching us right now. We, we had them already. We got them this coming weekend. Love a good sandwich. You have uh, fantasy football drafts happening. I know people who have had real home leagues already start. This weekend we'll have uh, a ton and... Uh, as the next two weekends go, I mean, we, this is the time. The time is nigh. We also have a very, very special week planned for the UDK because we are giving away uh, an ultimate draft kit for life. So um, I don't believe we let you bequeath this. I don't know. Yeah. Can I mean, you bequeath? I, is there a I assume I'm living forever. So this thing should go on for a long time. I'll allow bequeathing. It feels, will? feels like a real tax loophole. To bequeath? Yeah, I feel like the government will probably come in and shut that down. Value too great. Too great, yeah. I mean, I don't know what your future bequeath situation will be, <laughs> but we are giving away an ultimate draft kit for life, a Debo Samuel jersey that is signed by Debo himself. Very manly signature. And uh, Stefan Diggs, a signed mini helmet. It's, it's just like the imprint of a hammer. For is the, is for that what Debo. manly? Yeah. That's what makes it manly? Mm-hmm. Mm, okay. Uh, you can order the UDK. Here's how you enter, by the way, to win the Ultimate Draft Kit for Life. Order the 2022 Ultimate Draft Kit by Friday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Why that time? Well, that's because we are going live with uh, a special fantasy football live stream. We'll be answering questions. And at the end of that live stream, we will give away the Ultimate Draft Kit for Life. Uh, this Friday. So if you have purchased it in the past, you're entered automatically. If you have not yet got it, get it by Friday. Prepare yourself for your draft. It has all of our uh, in-depth player projections for every single relevant fantasy player. All three of us have done those. We update them regularly. This is not a, you know, a dead pre-printed magazine when players were in completely different situations. This is living and breathing and has sleepers, breakouts, busts, and values that we've updated. We just did our dynasty rankings yesterday. Updated those in the UDK. There's 100 player profile videos. There's a ton of tools and resources to use. And like I said, the winner will be announced 
on Friday on a live stream. So ultimatedraftkit.com for that. Jason, uh, you know, this quick question seems tied into you. So yeah, it's, which, a good, it's a good one. Which more are you most likely to draft at their current average draft position? Let me read them out for you. DJ Moore, fourth round pick, late fourth. Elijah Moore, eighth round pick. Sky Moore, tenth round pick. Rondale Moore, twelfth mm. round pick. Or you could go with Jason Moore, who is undrafted. <laughs> are you still on the Chargers? I would need to look that up. <laughs> Um, I should talk. talk you should to have my said agent. that, as you say. That's for my agent to handle if I'm on a team. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. I don't remember if I made that roster. Right I don't now. worry about such details. Yeah, I just go out and play ball, man. I'm here to play I ball. I really, I like this question because I'm not sure that any of them are bad picks at their draft position. I actually think all four. I mean, laid fourth, DJ Moore. Okay. Feels like the floor. Elijah. Elijah. Uh, Elijah. <laughs> I, I love Michael Keaton. Um, Elijah Moore has been balling out. I think he is so talented. What he showed on the field last year was um, outrageously good. He was one of those players you wanted to remember going out into the next year. It's like, tough, man, he's man. so good. But it is tough. Corey All Davis was out during some of that time that he was great and then they drafted Garrett Wilson it's so hard but the camp reports have said that he is the star that he is the main guy of mm -hmm. this receiving core so far this offseason and in the eighth round I really love it the issue yeah. is the situation here where you already had a Zach Wilson problem and now it, it you know we make jokes I make jo oh maybe this will be good for Elijah Moore because Zach Wilson is um you know we're going to find out more about his specific knee injury today it's not good, but it's not. It's not good. It's not good. You know, Joe, there's a reason Joe Flacco doesn't have a team, and Mike White wasn't drafted in the first round. So he does scare me. There, I do think it's worth taking a bit at the eight oh three. But to answer the question, who am I most likely to draft at ADP? It's DJ Moore. That's I've, mine too. I've had him quite a bit. When he falls to the, around that four or five turn, it's it's hard to pass him up. A guy who's had eleven hundred and fifty yards three straight years, and the only issue is touchdowns and he's had a guy throwing him the ball that does not know how to throw touchdowns so you can't just blame the wide receiver when the actual quarterback throws two percent of his passes as touchdowns mike is it dj Moore for you or is it elijah it's, it's elijah Moore for me it i was considering going with rondale Moore as a 12th round is spectacular when you have I mean, it works into our strategy of when we when we get these late round guys, we want to know immediately can this player be a contributor, and we will know very quickly is Rondell Moore the the off season hype that he is getting of he's going to be fully utilized, unleashed Rondell Moore this year. What is he going to be any taller? What, is, what does that look like? Not really sure yet, but I mean, it's he's going to be on the field a ton for those first six weeks with with DeAndre Hopkins suspended. But Elijah Moore, to me, in the eighth, like he's someone who, if everything breaks right, like I think he has the talent. He could finish top 15, even a top 12 wide receiver because he's so talented. Rondale, I don't, that's not in the range of outcomes to me with, with Hollywood and Hopkins eventually coming back. So it's just, I'll, I'll take that eighth round discount and see if it, really works out yeah and you might be listening and and to yourself thinking well sky Moore should be the best in the in the 10th round rookie wide yeah. receiver for patrick mahomes who was drafted in the second round great draft capital had a lot of production and there's there's a lot of you know if if you read articles there's a lot showing that rookie wide receivers beat their adp but that's very 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 misleading because that's on the season and if you're playing best ball okay use that information but the reality is rookie wide receivers usually get off to a slow start, super duper stars like Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase notwithstanding. And so when it comes to a draft pick in your home league, if you're looking at Sky Moore, I think he's a talented player who will have a good season. He's not someone that I'm looking forward to drafting because Andy's talked about you want a guy that you can cut after week one. Well, I don't think Sky Moore is going to dominate week one, and you're not drafting him for that. You're drafting him to work his way 
into this offense that it's being reported right now. It's clearly Juju and MVS as the two wide receivers and two wide receiver sets. And so second half of the year, I think Sky Moore could be very, very relevant this year, but that's not in my home leagues in a, in a managed league where I want to draft rookie wide receivers. Well, you'll see two Moores play each other in week one, Kansas City, Arizona. Sky Moore and Rondale Moore will get their shot. Um, but I'm I'm with you. The Sky Moore thing's tough because, like, where would you draft Demarcus Robinson right now after Tyreek left? Where would you draft Byron Pringle right now if you knew that those guys were going to be the third on this offense? Like, uh, yeah. Sky Moore would have to – he has to do a takeover. He has to pass a Juju or an MBS – because peripheral targets beyond Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey, even with Patrick Mahomes being the elite of the elite, of the elite have been entirely unpredictable and unreliable for fantasy for the Chiefs. Yeah, I, I, I get the points, but we know that those two guys are not – we know who they are. At the, We already know, and we don't know completely who Sky Moore is yet. So he at least has hope that like there, there is a chance. Like that, I feel like that's not honest. Because really? yes, because we th you should say the same thing about MVS. Then you know who MVS is, right? Well, uh, yeah, right? It's, it's, but you have promise with MVS. Yeah, right? it's it's hope it, for MVS. It's hope and following the actions of uh, the team. Like the the, the the actions of the team said, Sky Moore should be drafted in the second round. The actions of the team said we're giving MVS a three year, thirty million dollar deal, and they did not give that deal to. Robinson or Pringle, they just they let those guys go. Look, guys, I'm excited to announce yeah, go that, ahead and uh, share. I did sign a one year, eight hundred ninety five thousand dollar contract with the Los Angeles Chargers. Oh, lunch on you. Yeah, so uh, I'm playing, boys. But you're out with a soft <laughs> tissue issue. Well, I mean, I've got some hamstring problems. Of course, problems. We, we know how Jason Moore rolls. I've been sitting a lot. <laughs> All right, into the news. <laughs> news and notes from around the league. We have some quarterback sleepers, league winners, later round options that we want to get to today because we did quarterback uh, rankings top 10 yesterday. Today we were going to talk about some potential upside values. But in the news, going to blitz it real quick. Adam Schefter reporting there's a real chance that um, the status of Alvin Kamara's felony battery case will have no effect on his availability this season, which has been something we've kind of uh, insinuated is the likely outcome, but it's good to hear that. Probably draft him without very much consideration for that, to be honest. Cam Akers, Daryl Henderson, Rams running backs, both dealing with soft tissue injuries, being held out of practice. Oh, man. Is Kyron practicing? Yeah, he is. Is he back? Kyron Will <laughs> Williams, go. rookie uh, running back, <laughs> is practicing. It's something to monitor. It's just disappointing um, obviously Cam Akers coming off of an Achilles and Daryl Henderson never being able to stay on the field, but it does show that this team has two running backs that can have problems with their health. And so I can't imagine a world where Cam Akers just is the three down back. And they, I, I feel like they really need to spell each other to keep each other on the field. Yeah. I mean, Daryl Henderson last year missed a couple of weeks with injuries, um, uh, it's been an issue. Those soft tissues. Washington Post reporting Antonio Gibson is practicing with the punt team oh, and the third string offense. What is going on? So, man? uh, Antonio Gibson is trending towards the most terrifying middle round pick you can make. Yep. It's one of those things where you can't, I mean, it's a good example, right? You can't just put it in a vacuum and say, Antonio Gibson, look at your previous year's fantasy finishes and it's over. You have to see the context and, you know, he's practicing with the punt team where Brian Robinson used to be. Yeah, they, they like uh, running back in as one of the blockers in the slot because it, it mirrors pass protection. And Brian Robinson Jr., their uh, rookie they drafted this year, was was in that role and now today it was Antonio Gibson. So Maybe it, he's just not good at it and – like, right, like Gibson's. Brian Robinson was just terrible, and they're like, yeah. Gibson, you're so good. We need a we superstar. Need yeah, like they did team. with Barry Sanders and Walter Payton and all of those stars. Well, those yeah. guys, I don't well, know if you know this, they're terrible, punk. terrible on special teams. Mm, yeah. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson practicing in the James White role in the Patriots offense. There's a lot of – So dumb. There's a lot of uh, uh. optimism around Stevenson in general, which I think is fair and warranted. Pierre Strong has struggled. Their rookie running back, Damian Harris, is on a – an expiring contract. So Ramondre, independent of this report, was interesting. 
But um, he, he's a good pass catcher, and so far the uh, stats that have been shared from training camp have had a lot of passes going to the running backs, which is which is rare. But I, the thing that I think is dumb is just calling it the James White role. Like James White's not there, Tom Brady's not there, Josh McDaniels isn't there. They're installing a new run. This is a totally different offense. There is no, there's a, I mean, just because you throw it to a running back doesn't make it a James White role. So that this is just silly. To me. Yeah, I remember people stepping into the Darren Sproles role before. Yeah. yeah like, except for you need Darren Sproles for that role. Mm -hmm. uh, Melvin Gordon returned to practice on Monday. That foot contusion is fine. I, I found it very funny that, you know, in the world of Twitter reporting, somebody posted a picture of Melvin Gordon <laughs> yes. with a, quote, foot pad on. <laughs> and uh, he's practicing with a foot pad because of the foot contusion. And Melvin Gordon himself, who is a known Twitter replier. Oh, yeah. Look, ladies he, and gentlemen. He jumped in and said, that's my cell phone in my sock and then once you said that and you look at the picture it's like super clear that he's just got his cell phone in his sock and the, i mean could you imagine if you were the reporter yeah, just body bag it's got to feel, feel real bad but this is a good reminder if you are ever going to tweet about melvin gordon and you don't want that heat you don't don't write out his full name because this dude He's got a team of people. This dude searches his name up on Twitter and sees what people are saying about yeah, him. Yeah, you don't need to tag him. <laughs> no. If you no, use no, no, that no. name, he will see it. So use MG. We'll know what you mean. <laughs> Cliff Kingsbury, uh, I know, Jason, you were looking into this yesterday. Hollywood Brown, Kyler Murray, they were practicing. Yay! So you said you wanted to see that. Yeah, I mean, I uh, if if Hollywood continued to miss, you know, the 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 rest of the training camp with his soft tissue issues, I would have been uh, moving him significantly down the board. Even if they say he's ready to go, but he is back at camp, he's practicing. That is fantastic, and um, I think he's a great value right now. And if you want to see the video of them practicing together, um, and you look it up, it'll just look like the Falcons are practicing. Just so you know, it's really true because oh, the, the Cardinals the got the black helmets on with the red jerseys, and it's it's weird, man. Uh, let's talk quarterbacks. Quarterbacks. All right, yesterday we covered the top ten. If you want to hear us discuss these players, go ahead and uh, click on that episode. Josh Allen at number one, Justin Herbert at two, Kyler Murray at three, Jalen Hurts at four, Lamar Jackson at five, Mahomes at six, Brady seven, Russell Wilson eight. Burrow 9, Trey Lance came in at 10. Again, I'm going to repeat this because we saw a lot of comments on it. That was four point per touchdown leagues. That's what the rankings were. If you want to see, if you play in a six point per touchdown league, it does change the yeah, rankings a lot. They're pretty different. And one of the reasons to play in a six point per touchdown league is to mitigate the weight of rushing quarterback value to some degree. It's not no, it enough to satisfy my cohorts, but it does mitigate yes. that and it, put more weight into players like Stafford and Burrow and pocket passers. Yeah, I mean, think about it this way, where if Trey Lance runs for 40 yards, that's a passing touchdown. And like, or So it does change things a lot. You get the bonus for the rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown. Just compare it to rushing yards. It, it doesn't stack up. So on today's episode, we're going to look at uh, five more quarterbacks, 11 through 15. We're also going to discuss uh, players that have juicy opening schedules, streaming candidates. A lot of the time during the season, if you haven't been with us, you know we bring you a streaming quarterback option each and every week that you can plug and play into your lineup because you know we're not saying don't go draft a quarterback. We're saying be careful of what you trade in draft capital for a quarterback because there are a lot of very valuable players available uh, at the positions where a Justin Herbert, a Kyler Murray are being drafted. And then we'll talk about some other maybe later round and some super flex thoughts. You know, it feels like if you finish outside the top 10, you know, you're playing 10, 12 man leagues. Maybe that's a slap in the face, but over the last five years, quarterbacks that finish between 11 and 20 at the position they average five weeks as a top 12 quarterback. So those are your streaming weeks, right? Yeah, they are very, very usable. We There's always a stat that at the end of the year, over 40 quarterbacks end up with you a top. You want to know what the number was last year? Oh, yeah, I don't know it. It's a record. 
Oh, so it's in the is it in the fifties? Forty nine. Okay, Ooh. goodness. But, but you were saying forty nine finish with a top twelve performance. Exactly. I mean that there's thirty two teams and forty nine quarterbacks had a quarterback one week in fantasy football. There's a another reason why late round quarterback works. Streaming the position works, and these guys we're going to talk about today are going to be the obvious common streamers obviously to get to 49 you're going to have some injuries some backups that come in but the guys today are who you can really plug and play in a great matchup whether you're playing dfs or your home leagues um and and some have real explosive upside here's some names that finished top five in the last month of last year Taysom hill <laughs> zach wilson davis mills cam newton tyler huntley yeah baby who by the way tyler huntley again looked Great in preseason because the Ravens, they cannot be beat in the preseason. 21 consecutive preseason wins. Cam Newton yeah. in the last month of last year and that's was top a top five. five fantasy quarterback on a week. Wow, on I, a can, given, I do on a given not week. remember that. I don't remember that either. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah. So at 11 on our consensus uh, four-point quarterback rankings comes Dak Prescott. Uh, I have him at 10, Mike at 10, Jason at 13. He's being drafted as the quarterback eight, so we're a little bit below ADP. At least I can speak for myself with my ranking of Dak Prescott. It really has nothing to do with Dak. Uh, it's just the way the the numbers ended up. I think Dak, much like Lamar, will figure things out with a changing receiving uh, core. I just must have liked other quarterbacks slightly more in terms of total stats. But last year, almost 4,500 yards, 37 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Uh, only ran for one touchdown. That's low for what he normally does on mm -hmm. his career. Finished as the quarterback seven. So he's kind of being drafted around, you know, maybe not his complete floor, but close to it. Yeah, I, I, I hope that's true. And I, I think that probably – is true or at least where where I have him ranked is more towards his floor than his ceiling. I've got him at quarterback 13. Uh, the the nice thing is the coaching staff has talked about his mobility this offseason and getting him more involved in the running game as he did prior to the devastating ankle injury he suffered. And that's a huge part of his fantasy success because if it's just passing, if that's all that we're going to rely on. Well, no Michael Gallup to start the year, no Amari Cooper um you just don't have the same weapons to be great for fantasy. And I think that this is an offense that will be very good. So I I trust Dak to get it done. <clears throat> Quarterback 13 isn't a terrible ranking, but he's not someone that I've been excited about because I do think his ceiling is capped unless he ends up with six, seven, eight rushing touchdowns, which, which obviously he's had several years of six rushing touchdowns. It's in – um, the realm of possibility, he just doesn't excite me as much as a lot of the other quarterbacks around him. Dallas was number one in points per game. Part of that was the defense scoring a bunch, but you you can't minimize the fact that you're talking about the quarterback for the team that scored the most points in the NFL, 35 plus points seven times. I don't think any of us would be so foolish to say, oh, that's only because of Amari Cooper, right? Yeah. There's a lot of other elements there, but it may take a little time to figure that out Dr. Schultz himself, his tight end, one of the stability pieces that's still there, so should be really involved. They do start against Tampa and Cincinnati. Yeah, that's the, the point I was going to bring up. I I would not mind at all heading into the season. I kept waiting on quarterback. I was going with the late-round strategy, and the guys that I'm targeting, like Trey Lance, I mean, he's quickly moving up the ADP. There's there's guys that you like that there's, they're sliding up. If I left the draft with Dak, I think that's perfectly fine, but though Tampa Bay and the Cincinnati Bengals as the first two matchups, that's not particularly what I want my fantasy quarterback going up against. So that, that part could sting a little bit, but you do follow up with the Giants and Washington after that. So maybe Dak is someone that you're looking for on the waiver wire after a couple weeks uh, because I'm, I'm, I side more with Andy that the guy – has only been a top 12 quarterback when healthy. Of course, he broke his ankle, didn't finish in the top 12. I'm not going to hold that against him, guys. It's a bold decision. But he's been fantastic, and he's been fantastic with a lack of weapons before. So I, I just I trust in this offense and what Dak can do. All right, let's go to bargain Brady. <laughs> and I'm talking about number 12 on the list, Matthew Stafford. 
34 years old. We all have him ranked around 12. He was the quarterback five last year. And, uh, you know, it was a pretty, pretty steady year for Matthew Stafford. He had uh, what looks like uh, six different finishes inside the top six on, on the week. You add Allen Robinson to this offense. You have Cooper Cup. Uh, it was a high touchdown rate. We've seen 40 touchdown Matthew Stafford before, but, you know, the NFL is a little different now. I, I think 40 is within the range of outcomes here. I, I'm pretty optimistic that Stafford can stabilize your team if you wait late for quarterback. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. Matthew Stafford has done it before. We've We've seen him bounce back and forth, but with Sean McVay, you know, going into last year, we asked the question, like, are are we foolish for missing the obvious nature of matching Stafford with McVay and having a true explosive passing game? And it, and it came to fruition, and they won the Super Bowl. So Stafford is, uh, yeah, he's, he's you, you say, uh, bargain Brady. I think he's going right around Brady, and I would rather have Brady than Stafford. But the addition of Allen Robinson and being able to pass around the goal line uh, the touchdowns will come. I, I, he, he, now here's the thing with with Stafford is because he doesn't have the mobility, and he's not going to run. If he throws for 32 touchdowns, a, a very good number, you're not going to be happy with him at all. So I do feel like where you're drafting him is it's not necessarily at his ceiling quarterback rank wise, but where he goes up from there, there's not a bunch of extra juice. He is to me a perfect streamer. Because he plays in the NFC West, who plays the AFC West this year. We talked about that stat of how many, over 50% of all the 50-point games uh, in this coming season, as as the Vegas Lions currently dictate it, have the NFC and the AFC West involved in those games. So you want pieces in these offenses. I just don't know if I want him as my every can single I, week starter. Can I test it? Yeah. Would you rather have Matthew Stafford and Cortland Sutton or Jalen Hurts? Jalen Hurts. Then those two players together? Mike, would you rather well, have I, Matthew Stafford? I would Sutton? imagine I get another play. I don't just have to <laughs> de like delete a roster nope. spot. Yeah, right? You are playing I will blank. definitely take two over, over one, but I would imagine I get to replace the draft pick of Cortland Sutton with another. Yeah, but you're talking somebody like Brandon Ayuk. You're saying I, to I'm just I'm trying to illustrate the, the differences round. between those choices. If you draft Jalen Hurts where his ADP is, mm -hmm. that is the Sutton range. You you are trading Jalen Hurts for a Cortland Sutton. I'm just trying to ask the question of what you know. Would you rather have a Rashad Bateman and Jalen Hurts, or would you rather have a Sutton Matthew Stafford? Yep. Those are the kinds of choices fantasy players have to go through. The the downside here for Matthew Stafford. I mean, again the. We don't fully know what's going on with the elbow. Uh, there's just been there's been a lot of negative reporting coming in about the possible tendonitis. I don't know exactly. Are you worried about that? Uh, that's uh, it's at least on at least it has to be on your radar. Like there's they haven't shut him down. He's still throwing. And Matthew Stafford, you don't control my radar, Mike. <laughs> that's <laughs> mine. All right. Uh, and he's tough. Like Stafford has played through numerous injuries in his career, so. I'm not saying like I'm completely shifting where he is, but you have to factor that in against these other guys. And last year, what was what's his passing touchdowns? Forty-one, six point eight percent. Okay, and f over forty touchdowns. The Los Angeles Rams last year. Uh, let me let me pull up the number again. Had ten rushing touchdowns. Ten. This is the Rams. Like you go back two years, tw uh, nineteen rushing touchdowns. Go back three years, twenty rushing touchdowns. Like. That's a number that I would expect to at least balance out a little bit. Maybe this new Matthew Stafford Rams, they just they do, uh, you know, they keep it real heavy on the passing touchdown side, but if that number jumps to 15 just to just to illustrate what Jason's talking about, if those passing touchdowns come down and it easily could, it could just turn into Cam, they didn't have a full I mean like it was like Sony Michelle for half the season or whatever if it's truly cam makers a healthy cam makers and a healthy daryl henderson i would expect them to score more than 10 rushing touchdowns previous four years with jared goff 20 22 32 28 all right let's move on let's talk about bargain stafford <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing names here. These uh, really 11 through 15 is, are a bunch of non-running, pocket-passing, touchdown-dependent. Mm-hmm. Upside is there, but you have to, you know – you have to paint the picture of it going the right way, but they're all in that category because they don't run the football. Kirk Cousins at 13, bargain Stafford, who's bargain Brady. I like Cousins a lot. There have been some very, Jason, maybe plug your ears, uh, there have been some very, very positive Adam Thielen reports of late. Looking like vintage 2016 to 2018 Adam Thielen. Oh, that's not possible. You also have... You, his health is all that matters. I'm telling you right now, his health is all that matters because when he's on the field, he finds a way to dunk on every oh. analyst that has ever doubted him, including last year. Now, he may have dunked through how'd you score that many touchdowns, but all the optimism and all the things we like about Kevin O'Connell, the offense being more pass-heavy, Justin Jefferson being a game-breaker that's going to be double-covered on every play – there is a story here where Adam Thielen ends up being a big value. And again, this is just to say Cousins has multiple weapons. He has been a very steady quarterback. And, um, you know, is this one of those situations where, like, well, we should have seen 40 touchdowns coming from Cousins? Yeah, Cousins is a great value this year. He's not the, the type of quarterback that is going to electrify and give you, you know, five number one overall fantasy finishes. But if you want to bypass on the Kyler and Jalen Hurts, get get the Cortland Sutton and go with a later quarterback, to me, that's Kirk Cousins. The difference between Kirk Cousins and Matthew Stafford this year, I don't see as drastic. They both, you know, and and I look at a quarterback going ahead of Kirk Cousins in Derek Carr. Derek Carr gets a new weapon, and they're like, oh, maybe he'll throw for, you know, 4,300 yards, and now he'll get up into the 30s for his touchdowns. It's like, that's what Kirk Cousins done the last two years, and now Kirk Cousins goes away from the defensive-minded head coach, and they get an offensive guy in there who's going to run more three wide receiver sets throw the ball more and they have and a his, worse defense and is and a worse, a much defense. worse defense in the Rams and his baseline you know the last couple of years has been 4233 uh you know uh 4235 yeah since Jefferson got yeah. there so I I really really like targeting Kirk Cousins much later if you don't get one of the top guys Mike talk to me about Aaron Rodgers who comes in at 14 you uh, that feels bad yes yeah, this doesn't feel right at all. No. Again, four point per touchdown rankings. Rodgers uh, is a touchdown thrower. And so six point per touchdown for passing touchdown makes a big difference in where he ends up. He was also the quarterback six last year. Um, got paid $150 million. I, I know that losing Devontae Adams is going to impact him. But at least statistically, it hasn't been a big impact when he's had to rotate through receivers. He's lost Jordy. He's lost Cobb. He's lost, um, you know, a number of of meaningful players over the years. And there is some promise here, right? Alan Lazard is there. Romeo Dubs. uh, Christian Watson will eventually be back, even if no one wants to touch him right now. Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon. The the problem is, like this is very much like the Kansas City Chiefs of, Everything is hope. I have huge hope for Alan Lazard. I I think he can be a double digit touchdown player that you can get really late in the draft. But for looking at just the numbers for for Aaron Rodgers, yeah, he he almost always figures it out. But we have those couple years of 2018 and 2019 where he threw 25 touchdowns and 26 touchdowns because his and his touchdown rate plummeted for him down into the league average and slightly below the league average so that it, having said that even those years he was the quarterback seven and quarterback 10 so where we have him does it, it feels really bad and and really low where we have him but it's this is just where our projections put him it's so it's really scary to bet on a completely unknown set of wide receivers Mahomes at least has Travis Kelsey where we know that that connection's fantastic but but all the pieces around Rodgers is his newfound rejuvenation and, and love. Like if all the stuff that's going on with Rodgers in the offseason, one of the things he talked about was he's he's back in love with football. He kind of, you know, some self-reflection. He's got some some self-happiness now, likes the game again. So he the, of of our rankings, you this, think his, this one feels 
by far like the scariest of will look really bad, and Rodgers just continues to be great. You think his uh, GPG will go down? His GPG? Yeah, the grimaces per game. You it think may. If, he, if he's a happier fella, you it think may. he will? Hmm. It, it may, but I, but I also think that that could just be – like that's just his competition face. He can't control that. When push comes to shove, I, I have a hard time saying that I wouldn't draft Rodgers over – Stafford or Kirk yeah. Cousins, if I had that choice, just because he's Aaron, Rod- Aaron Rodgers. He's yeah. Aaron Rodgers, and he'll <laughs> go out and he'll play against the Rams defense and be the number two quarterback on the week, or he'll go out and play against you know a, a challenging opponent. And he has a nice start to the year: Minnesota, Chicago. Hey man, I mean, uh. he lives to destroy <laughs> Chicago. Yes, he does. I believe he is the owner of the yes. Chicago Bears. Yeah, he if, uh, uh, reminded uh, us. Uh, we, just, we just lost the city of Chicago. <laughs> um, they know. <laughs> they're, they're aware. They live there. Um, they're trusting the process, man. Yeah. It, look, I, I talked about one of the tips uh, last week was to draft high volatility players, players with high upside that can go out and win a week. If you're talking about the difference between Kirk Cousins and Aaron Rodgers, if they're at the same place in the draft if they fall to around the same place which I just had that happen in one of my drafts I took Aaron Rodgers over Kirk Cousins because I do think that the peaks will be higher and so he will win me more weeks that being said this is a team and a new setup and a new system here that I do think his lows will be more than we have been used to even last year when he was the quarterback six he had six games you know outside of the top 14 quarterbacks so we're just where he really didn't come through because this is a really good defense in a pretty easy division right now. Uh, I don't think that the Lions and Bears are really scaring people, even if there's hope. And so if the team gets up, A.J. Dillon, Aaron Jones, they can yeah. you know, they can really control this game, get an easy win, and you can have a lot of disappointing games. But when Aaron Rodgers needs to throw, I don't care who the receivers are, he'll, he'll get his touchdowns and he'll have his monster uh, top three, you know, finish on the fantasy week. Finished at seven, finished at ten with Devonte Adams back in 2018 and 2019. So mm-hmm. uh, that is where he can be. You know, he can end up in that range. He, j- I, I forgot he jumped from 26 touchdowns to 48 between 2019 and 2020. Yeah, he was back. So um, Derek Carr coming in at 15. Look, there's not anything positive fantasy wise you can say about Derek Carr last year now as an NFL quarterback he is hi- more highly valued than he is in fantasy but it's hard to say that Devontae Adams is going to walk in the door and completely fix Derek Carr's entire history fantasy wise his highest finish on any week last year was seven for a single week that's with 4,800 yards passing and that was QB7 with 19 points. Yeah, That's I mean, a bad he, week. He wasn't even, I mean, if you look at our, if you go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, we rank consistency on the player profiles. Derek Carr's consistency was 41.2%. That is the percent of games in which he exceeded 21 points. That's just considered a decent benchmark for the quarterback position. So four out of 10 games, you got decency from Derek Carr, and, and that's the reality. That's not an insult to Derek Carr, the player. That's just a in, indictment on his fantasy value, and I don't think Adams can fix all of that. No, he can't. He's going to make Derek Carr better, but, I mean, we're, we've got eight seasons of Derek Carr being a quarterback, and he's had good weapons. He had Amari uh, Cooper and, and Michael Crabtree, and he's had good weapons before. He has never once finished as a quarterback one on the season in four-point-per-passing touchdown leagues. He's never been a massive touchdown thrower. His touchdown totals over the last several years, 23, 27, 21, 19, 22, 28. So can he get to 30? Sure. Yeah, in this sure. Divi- yeah, in this division. Why not? Absolutely. You know what, Carr? You get to 30 this year. I just declared it. You're allowed. But, like, Kirk's going to be at 30 for sure. Stafford's <laughs> well, going to be at 30 for sure. It's funny because – Roger's going to be at 30 for – like – yeah, I, Stafford has Cooper Cup. Kirk Cousins has Justin Jefferson. This is not a; those are at least equal weapons compared to Devontae Adams. So that's just the reality. That's why we have him ranked at fifteen uh, four point leagues. Other players, you know, you know, out of the five that we mentioned today, let's start here: Dak, Stafford, Cousins, Rogers, Carr. Are any of those who's got the highest odds of finishing in the top eight? Uh, Aaron Rodgers. 
Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> yeah, just, I, I, uh, I would say I would say Rodgers probably. <laughs> as, 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 <laughs> yeah, okay. it does feel that I way. I mean, him or Dak. Uh, outside of the top fifteen quarterbacks, our next five: Daniel Jones, Tua Tungavailoa, Trevor Lawrence, Matt Ryan, Mac Jones. Yeah, you're not really. There's two. There's two guys there okay. that I'm. I'm interested in and it's it's Tua and Trevor Lawrence uh, because there are situations that have trained changed where you can make the narrative that they will step up now Tua we've seen a lot more of he has much 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 better weapons when you've got Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill th those players can do a lot for you but he doesn't run the ball so you're going to have some of the Joe Burrow stuff where even though your weapons are great uh, you might not be great for fantasy the one that I'm how would you like to play uh, New England, Baltimore, Buffalo, Cincinnati for Tua's I would not like that start. opening schedule? Um, no, thank you. But the quarterback that I'm most interested in that's kind of the later guys is, is Trevor Lawrence, who when I exited last season, I had left for dead. I gave no room for improvement because he just looked so inaccurate. He did not show me a lot of flashes. But di diving deeper and looking at how – putridly that offense was run last year and the fact that he still got 3600 yards passing as a rookie with urban meyer and no weapons and now they go and they get him evan ingram and they get him christian kirk and zay jones these are in his back yeah yeah travis et in his back uh and you know he passed a lot to the running back last year so you could have a lot of those inflated stats the way that Drew Brees used to have just by dumping the ball to a uh, a running back and taking it from there I do think that if there's one quarterback later that really surprises and next year is you know talking about oh man he's the pick it would be Trevor Lawrence it would be the player who was drafted number one overall is supposed to be otherworldly you know the Peyton Manning the Andrew Luck maybe he is the dude he's still 22 years old right now Opens against Washington, who gave up the most quarterback fantasy points in 2021. So if you do want to risk something, week one, you know, you have the chance that you have a starter, to Jason's point. Uh, is there anybody else on the remainder of the quarterback list that you want to call out as interesting by way of streaming candidate? Uh <sighs> I will say it. It's Daniel Jones uh, because he actually is mobile. Uh, he, you know, just over the course of his career, he's he, even if he gets tripped up a little bit by the turf monster, he, we've we've still seen big plays out of him. You know, his sophomore year, over 400 rushing yards. That's not elite, but we're not talking about elite fantasy quarterbacks right now. If if they can figure it out in New York with the new Dable system, then Daniel Jones will have, he will have weeks where you are very happy to stream him against a, a bad fantasy, a, a, a bad defense. Have The reports are not great though. Like <laughs> right now. Oh, is he still looking like Daniel Jones? Yeah. He's, he's still looking like Daniel Jones. Well, that's one of his weaknesses. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I totally agree. That's why I'm very hesitant uh -huh. talking about this, but when uh, quarterbacks in this range, like I have Matt Ryan is going to be fine. He will be just so right in that sweet spot of QB 12 to 15 ish where you're like, yeah, hey, I didn't lose because of Matt Ryan, but he certainly I don't think he helped me win. And I would say that's how I feel exactly. Yeah, you probably about lost Matt. because he didn't help you win. OK, and that and the guys in this range, that's how I feel. That's how I feel about Mac Jones as sure. well. Like just I don't think that he, it's fine. He's a good quarterback. In a great situation, but I, the way that you the, fine with him as a quarterback too in Superflex, Mac Jones or Daniel Matt Jones? Ryan or Mac Jones? Yeah, yeah. I think I think the pocket passing guys who aren't going to go out and win you a week, but are consistent. Those are the guys I really like as my second quarterback in a Superflex league because they give you a really high baseline, and hopefully you have a solid quarterback one. Um, if you're not in a super flex and you're just looking for another late round dart throw who can go out and win you week, I think it's Justin Fields. Yes. Just because of the mobility. He could run for eight, 900 yards. If he runs for 900 yards, he's a top 12 quarterback this year. Like there's just, uh, it doesn't even matter if he's sucks. He's, he's a top Better 12 right quarterback. Better run the right direction though. <laughs> no, towards the opposing. I would agree zone. with that. 
Uh, Miles Sanders missed practice on Tuesday. He is uh, looking to hang out with Antonio Gibson, the way that news has broke for Miles Sanders over the last month. Struggling with pass catching. You have Kenneth Gainwell. You have other backfield options. Uh, Miles Sanders had a brief point in which I thought maybe we'd get yeah. some something special, but really him and Antonio Gibson are not trending the right way. And Gainwell is very good. I, I think I think Gainwell is going to be like in a dynasty league. He's someone that I would try to steal for free, even if it's not for this year. It's kind of like last year we told a lot of people go get Ramondre Stevenson because there was kind of one year left uh, is what it looked like with Damian Harris, and that's how I feel about Gainwell going forward because if he shows a little bit more in his sophomore year than he did in his rookie year going into next year, I think they will allow him to take more of the reins. That is going to do it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. couple of reminders for you, the Ultimate Draft Kit giveaway. Make sure you head over there, ultimatedraftkit.com. Make yourself eligible to win the UDK for life. Also, we will be doing a mock draft episode later this week, I believe Friday, but I can't. I'm looking for a nod Friday. And the, oh, yeah. I think the Deucers will be involved in this one as well. <laughs> I mean, they may never be involved in another one after we get done with them, to, but I think we're going to give it a go. All right, make sure you follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and we'll catch you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.